Look who it is. It's Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. In the, in the Democratic primaries, this crisis already had an you know, impact on our politics here. It, it, you know, Israel and the Palestinian uh, crisis always has some effect. It, it's, it's part of our political conversation in the United States. But there has been a very interesting and very direct one in the primaries. Mm -hmm. In uh, just last week, 15% of voters in Rhode Island, 11% in Connecticut, 8% in Wisconsin voted uncommitted to protest the U.S. support of the present military action in Israel under Netanyahu's government. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you make of that movement? And do you have anything as a prominent progressive voice to say to those people mm -hmm. yeah. who are holding up their support over this? Well, I think, first of all, it's important. We need to acknowledge, actually, the, the upside of the uncommitted movement, which is that these are folks that could have easily given way to cynicism and walked away from this process entirely. And what they're doing instead is using the primary to send a message and say, this is important to me, to the president. This is important to me. I'm going to engage in our democratic process. I am going to show up. I am going to vote. I am going to say what's important to me. But I also know, and I do believe that many in the uncommitted campaign believe this, I also know the, and understand the threat of a Donald Trump presidency. The Democratic Party has always been a coalition party. And we have to bring everybody together every time because that's what it means to be American. And so they are, they are offering and saying, this is what's important to us. A lasting peace is what's important to us. And this is, what, this is the message we want to send before the convention. It's the message that we want to send before the general election because we are committed and, and, and put and together on all of these values. And on the other side of this, too, beyond the uncommitted campaign, on the other side of the spectrum, there is an enormous $100 million financed operation to primary every, virtually any sitting member of Congress that calls for a ceasefire. So you have Jamal Bowman here that has a primary challenge, Cori Bush that has a primary challenge, I myself now just have a primary challenge, just for saying that Palestinians deserve human rights and that they should be protected. And so we do have a complex political fabric around this issue in this country. I think that it should be centered on, and where our, our home base always is, is what are our values as Americans? And if our commitment to, to lasting peace, global democracy, and our, our own values for freedom of speech and liberty, then if these are the values that we want to protect, protect, then we have to acknowledge and see one another for the pain that we're holding. And once people feel like their concerns have been seen, then we can start the process of coming together. And so right now, these are folks who want to be seen. I think they're using this process to be seen, and it's best that we do that now than for folks to stay home in November. So respond to this now is what you would recommend the Biden administration to do yeah. so people can trust his judgment in the future. Um, before we move on to the next subject, uh, will you be voting for Joe Biden? I will be voting for President Biden in November. Okay. Yes. All right. Absolutely. We have to take another little break here, uh, but if you'll stick around and you'll stick around, we'll be right back with more Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah.